Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, we are excited that you could be with us today to discuss adapted scuba for veterans and members of the armed forces who have disabilities. We have um, some folks here who are going to discuss um, what scuba is all about and how you can get involved and a great opportunity today for you to become certified. Uh, a little bit about me and Move United. Um, I, my name is Julia Ray. I'm the program director for Move United, which is an organization formerly known as Disabled Sports USA. And I'm joined by my colleague, Brie Kogorski. Um, she works uh, alongside me, heavily involved in the Warfighter Sports Program. So that's our program that's specifically for um, disabled veterans and members of the armed services, providing all, all sorts of free adaptive sports. So I'm joined today um, by a couple of really experienced people in the field of scuba. So I'm going to have, um, first of all, ask John um, to maybe introduce himself and talk a little bit about SUDS. We've, um, in Move United and SUDS, go, back, go way back, um, we're proud to say, and we kind of crossed paths at Walter Reed Military Medical Center a long time ago, um, tried to have uh, support each other along the way. So maybe, John, if you'd just go ahead and give us a little bit of background about yourself um, and about your organization, that'd be great. Sure, uh, I'm John Thompson, and uh, I started diving back in, in the 80s. Um, I worked in the dive industry throughout the Caribbean, uh, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Cuba. Uh, spent four years in the Outer Banks, guiding uh, shark diving and shipwreck diving in North Carolina. Um, used to guide for companies outward bound, and then my winters, I would uh, guide diving trips in the Caribbean, and I'd come back in the summer and guide uh, mountaineering expeditions. And a lot of the locations we dive or we go to, is I used to live and work, have uh, close contacts. And about 13 years ago, uh, I started uh, at Walter Reed in the DC area. And now I'm living in uh, San Antonio, Texas. So, what prompted you to start such as an organization? What kind of inspired you? Well, my my uh, wife at the time her medical residency at Walter Reed, and I'd never been there. So in 2005, we got we got transferred uh, to the D.C. area. I went to have lunch with her. And it was the first time I'd been in the facility. It was a very eye-opening experience, and I knew at that moment that I wanted to get involved. But really wasn't quite sure because all I've ever done since I got out of college was climb and dive. I really didn't know what I had to offer. So I just decided to go to the American Red Cross office at Walter Reed. and. Uh, I wanted to be a volunteer, and they put me in the aquatic therapy uh, department. <laughs> there wasn't any diving going on, just because of my water background. And then after a while, I was like, well, here's a pool, here's all these uh, men and women. I wonder if we could use diving to help with their rehab. So I spoke to uh, Colonel Springer, Barbara Springer, who was the chief uh, therapist at Walter Reed at the time. And she happened to be a certified diver. I told her about my idea. and. She saw the merit in it and gave me the green light. That's awesome. And I think you've probably helped hundreds of veterans at this point try adapted scuba. And uh, we're hoping to get a few more involved today. So it's awesome. And awesome. I didn't mention at the beginning, if anybody wants to ask a question for Orlando or John, um, what we'll do is a little bit of Q&A time at the end. People can drop off or stay on as you like and use the Q&A function. Um, if you found the chat function, that's fine. Use that to talk amongst yourselves. Um, Brie will be watching that too. And then uh, just put Q&A for uh, anything you want to post to the whole group at the end. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over. I wanna also introduce Orlando to you. Orlando is a, a disabled veteran himself. And um, Orlando, why don't you share a little bit about your experience with Scuba and how you got involved? Oh, hi, Julia. Uh, well, I, hi, guys. Uh, so I officially got certified in 2005. Uh, we were doing uh, the same sports at the time before it became Move United. Uh, was running a scuba program uh, out of Rockville, uh, the, not Rockville, sorry. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, out of Breezy Point in New York. Uh, so we... What's name? I got involved and I liked it. And sure enough, uh, afterwards, I kind of like... It became a passion and I'm like, I could do this. And I did my bulk rehab uh, doing uh, scuba diving. So until I became an instructor. 
uh, I've also participated with uh, in John uh, John Thompson's uh, such program, um, mm -hmm. which I've enjoyed uh, a lot, and I can see the benefits from both sides as an instructor and as a patient of how the uh, scuba diving actually helps the veterans. Were there any specific challenges you had to kind of overcome kind of relating to your injuries or anything that kind of got in the way or did you find scuba was just a great sport, great equalizer? I found the water itself to be the great equalizer uh, being that I'm uh, below the, uh, actually above the knee amputee so carrying my equipment sometimes it was like hard and that's the only part like sometimes getting my equipment uh, but you know when we do these uh, events uh, whether it was with, the, with Move United or with such, there's always somebody out there to help you, boat crews. Uh, but once you get in the water, uh, your amputation really doesn't hinder you in any way, form or fashion. Mm -hmm. And you reach your, your buoyancy, you actually, the pressure off your back comes off. So you actually feel no pressure in your body. So you actually feel more comfortable and more relaxed. Awesome. Well, um you know, Orlando, John, Orlando has just mentioned a couple of the benefits, but maybe you could speak more to why, why else is the sport so great, particularly if you do have an injury and uh, tell us a little bit about how it's beneficial for your health. Sure, I got lots. Um, it's something you can do with your, your spouse, spouse, your family, your friends. Uh, also, it helps you gain strength, flexibility, help lower your uh, blood pressure helps your breathing, help calm you down. Um, you can maintain uh, or increase your fitness, travel to a warmer climate uh, and Austin destination. There's also that healing effect that we talk about. And when I'm in the ocean, I just feel better. Um, you get to interact with marine life. I can't tell you the crazy dive stories I've got over the years. I've been in the water with whale sharks, which is the size of you know a greyhound bus. I've been in the water with humpback whales. Dolphins, manta rays, turtles. So, more time to put in the water, you know, better chance for seeing all these cool things. Uh, exposure to sunlight, get your vitamin D. Uh, socializing benefits. Uh, you meet people from all over the world when you're diving and learn about other new locations. Even though I've been diving for a long time, there's lots of places I haven't been. So, when I'm on a dive boat talking to other folks, you know, tell me about other destinations I haven't been to. And uh, basically, it's the same. And is, who can participate? I mean, is it? Um, can you kind of describe some of the accommodations you you can make um, for certain types of disability? And can anyone do it? We we've seen kinds of injuries, uh, lots of amputees. Um, we've had burn victims, uh, spinal cord injury, uh, PTSD. Uh, vision and hearing impaired. Uh, what else? Uh, some form of DI. Uh, the great thing about diving is we don't have to make a lot of modifications. You're, you're kind of like an astronaut floating through space. You're in that anti gravity environment in the water. Um, so, normally, the few modifications that we do use are sometimes we use web gloves or uh, weight integrated BC. We sees the vest that you wear. So we can, instead of using the traditional weight belt, we can shift the weights around in your vest, help trim you out and get you balanced. Um, we use scooters in the past. You've probably seen in the movies, the, you know, the divers using the scooters to get around. And then uh, sometimes, not often, but uh, some operators may have a, a hoist that will you in the water and bring you out of the water. In fact, uh, we use that when we were in Micronesia in Trek Lagoon, uh, Orlando was on that trip. But that's just the great thing about diving is uh, you don't need a lot of modifications. And equally, it's good to know if there is anything that um, would prevent somebody from being able to dive. So do you ever see any kind of um, conditions or complications in regards to diving, anything to do with your health that might prevent you from enjoying it so that everybody sure. has a head up about that? Yes, and that's you know, something a doctor could better decide, and, and there's a form that you need to take to get signed off by the doctor, but just off the top of my head, uh, a few things would be uh, folks that are prone to seizures, 
um, severe ear, ear issues because you, you have to be able to clear your ears to die. Um, some types of asthma and, uh, or a pneumothorax. Those are just a few that would be best decided by your physician. Great to know. So, um, so how do you get involved? Um, so how do you, how does somebody um, become certified to dive? What can you maybe talk us a little bit through the process? Um, then what's what the time commitment's like? How much um, investment is this for people to to learn how to scuba dive? Sure, it's not that complicated. Uh, diving, it's not it's not rocket science. Uh, you start out by filling out our application. Um, as I mentioned, you would have a form that your uh, doctor or physician will need to work on. Uh, the liability waivers need to be completed. Then, uh, once you get into it, the academic section, um, depending on what organization you go through, but typically there's about five chapters that you have to read at the end of each chapter. There's some questions, knowledge reviews that you answer. Uh, there's several videos that you watch. Then you'll spend, uh, you'll do a couple of sessions in the pool where you're actually learning the skills, the dive skills that you will use once you actually go dive. And then uh, you've got to complete four open water checkout dives. And typically, you'll do two one day and two the next day. And you, know, you can spread that out for you know, several weekends, several months. But in the primary uh, organization that we work through, which is SDI, once you, you've started the process, you have six months to complete uh, from beginning to end. What's some of the differences between the organizations? Um, there's, there's Patty, now we, um, SDI, can you maybe talk about the, di the different organizations that um, others may have heard about? I can, and there's not a lot. Uh, you know, it's kind of like Ford and Chevy. Uh, in the the lower levels of diving, just your, your basic open water certification or your advanced stuff like that, I don't think it really matters if you're, you know, NAWI, PADI, SSI, SDI. Uh, once you get into the professional ratings of like dive master instructor, that can matter. Uh, PADI has been the largest, PADI, PADI has been the largest organization worldwide for many years. So if you wanted to eventually get in the dive industry and work professionally, uh, you know, you might want to look at at Patty, but we do everything through SDI. Uh, they're a great organization, and I know Orlando is with Naui. Uh, so really, those those your initial certification of open water advance, it doesn't really matter if you're SDI, Patty, SSI, Naui. Um, they're all really good training uh, organizations. Orlando, did you have any other anything else to add about the training organizations you've worked through and your experiences with them? Well, actually, kind of like John covered because uh, now we has an adaptive program. So uh, SSI also has an adaptive program. Uh, of course, SDI has one. Uh, yeah, just once you get to the higher levels of diving, yeah, you might choose a different TDI for technical diving, SDI. Uh, once you want to get into those, uh, you know, more... Uh, different avenues and you know you want to be a cave diver you want to be a wreck diver think oh, or a technical diver yeah you might need to switch out to a different organization but other than the at the end of the day they're all going to teach you the same thing yeah and i think uh, the scuba community is a really kind of welcome at least my experience has been a really welcoming community so it doesn't really matter which which group you're you're working with all the shops being really especially ready and willing to help veterans um really generous with their with the time um and everything so we'll talk a little bit about the process in a moment as far as um, the opportunity we have today but what um we had another question around equipment what kind of equipment do you need to get started what do you recommend you rent and purchase and how does how does that work um john why don't you take that first the majority of the dive shops are going to require that you do purchase your own mask fins and snorkel and occasionally maybe a wetsuit depending on where you are you know like if you're up in new york or somewhere but uh just to get started it's typically mask fins and snorkel and uh the rest of the equipment that the dive shop they, they will provide for your training and then once you're certified and you travel um 
the dive shop's gonna, they're gonna have everything. Even if you don't wanna travel with your own mass fins and snorkel, they'll have everything. We don't ever travel with tanks or weights. And pretty much in suds, uh, we just use what the dive site has on location because you know, with the baggage fees they wear, the way they are on air, uh, airplanes these days, uh, that weight can add up with all that dive gear. So we typically just uh, use what equipment that the dive shop provides. So it doesn't take too much to get started. No, nope, mass fin snorkel and you're pretty much ready. Now, Landa, you, you mentioned about some of the continued pathways that you can take, kind of there are different interest areas, like people can become, get a specialty certification in photography down the line, or like you mentioned caves or, or boat diver. Um, do you want to um, expand on that a little bit about where you can take this as a hobby or a sport um, that you're involved in down the line? Kind of where can you go with it? Well, actually, uh, where, where you can go with uh, Professionally, I've known a lot of photographers. They've actually taken a lot of, uh, they've taken classes and of course they know a little bit more about photography when it comes down to, you know, above water. And but when it comes down to uh, being in the water, uh, it's a whole different animal, uh, different lights, different everything. Is just to get the, uh, the the right spectrum. Uh, but other than that, what's the name? Um, specialities. They get you into different places, and sometimes, even in diving, there is, uh, I would say, cliques or groups. You know, some people they just want to go wreck diving, or some people are more interested into cave diving. So other than, I mean, than just, you know, being more versatile into going to different places. Uh, you have to have, uh, like John and I, when we went cave diving in Dominican Republic, uh, they had a sign, they were like, do not go past this point if you're not certified. So it's uh, sometimes it just becomes a safety issue. Mm -hmm. So that's the, basically the training it, it takes you, that way you could do more. A lot of it is location dependent. And like where I used to work in North Carolina, there's no reef there. They're too far north. So it's all uh, shipwrecks and artificial reef. So that would be, if you're really into, you want to get into wreck diving, that's the place you go. would be the Moorhead City, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So you want to get into deep diving or wall diving. You can go to places like on the south coast of Puerto Rico, they've got a wall that goes from 60 feet and drops sheer to 3,000. Uh, Cozumel, Mexico, you want to get into drift diving. You can't can't do out and back dives there because the currents are so strong. So it's all drift diving. So you get a drift diving specialty there. Um, just depends on what kind of diving you want to do. Um, and you go to a location that's known for that type of diving. Mm -hmm. So I want to move on and talk a little bit about um, an opportunity that we um, bring to everybody that's on the webinar today. Um, and this is something that um, was, was really sort of managed and by subs. We've been working with John for quite some time on this. And um, the fact that um, we're now kind of working in this more virtual environment and don't have as many um, live opportunities to get together and, and do the sports, we thought what a great time to kind of get some of the classroom portion of um, the certification done in advance while you're at home. So um, we have um, Move United together with Studs is partnering and, and working to offer this opportunity to apply to cover um, up to 10 veterans with disabilities who have not received pre previously received their open water certification or may have um, done it before their injury and it's since lapsed and, and have not had a chance to renew, um, especially post injury. So what that includes is the, um, all the fees for the classroom portion of the, um, of the training and then as well as up to $500 to cover both the to partner with a, a local dive shop that's near you um, and to um, cover the fees for getting the pool time that you'll need um, done as well as your own kind of mask and snorkel kind of that's really the equipment like John was describing earlier that all you need to kind of get going. Um, everything else can be covered with the scholarship to, to rent at the pool that you would need. Um, 
So that would be the first steps. Um, there's an application. I am putting it into the chat for everybody as well as um, it is also on, on your screen. And what we'll also do is send the link out um, post webinar as well. Um, and then those who kind of successfully are selected and then go through the whole process um, would then get on the list with SUDS for the opportunity to do the checkout dive at a later date once we're all able to travel and be together once again. Um, John, is there anything you'd like to add as far as um, kind of the commitment, just making sure anybody who does apply is, um, you know, has the right expectations for what this involves? Sure. Uh, if if you're going to come in, you know, we, we expect you to, to follow through with it. And as I mentioned, you have about six months to complete that. Um, you'll need to do a little research or you can email me to find a, a dive shop that's, that's close to you. And even though the SUDS program, we're an SDI facility, uh, uh, Orlando does now, it really doesn't matter being trained with your academics and your pool work with another organization, let's say it's Patty or SSI, once you're ready to do your first checkout dives, we can cross you. So, uh, don't feel like you're limited to finding just an SDI shop. So just get the training with uh, whatever organization your local dive shop provides, and then we can do your four checkout dives. Great, and John and Orlando are very generous with the time and they'll be more than happy to help you um, if you are, if you're one of the 10 that's selected for the scholarship, um, they will be in touch just to make sure you do get connected with the local shop and explain to you the rest of the process and, and the forms and things needed. Um, and so I think with that, um, that covers most of what we were gonna talk about today. Is there anything else, Orlando or John, that you wanted to share with our audience before we um, see if there's any questions? It's just, it's a great, um, I've been doing it for many years and, uh, you know, I, when I was guiding in civilian, it wasn't unusual to see people in their late seventies and early eighties still diving. So it's not like you know high school playing football for most of us after high school football is, over. but with diving, it's something you can do the rest of your life. And it's, it's a great sport. I've had some of my most underwater. For sure, and something you can enjoy with your family too, Orlando. I know your wife enjoys um, diving with you as well. Yes, actually, uh, one of the things that John covered, what's the name, is something that once you get your certification, as long as you keep up with it, you know, you're certified for life. Mm -hmm. You know, keep diving, you're still certified for life. Uh, nothing really much changes in diving, uh, except that, you know, uh, like, you know, I've traveled with John, I travel with, you know, I travel separately also with my wife and things like that. Uh, once you go to a different location, when you go to a trip, Pretty much everything is the same thing. You go sightseeing, you go touch this, touch that. But when it comes into underwater, you could dive the same spot every day, and every day is going to be something different. Uh, it changes, and you just become a better diver. So, Bree, were there any um, questions that we did not cover today? Um, I think so. There was a lot of uh, chatting going on, so I've been focusing on that, but there are some good questions. Um, quite a few about how, um, if someone has a traumatic brain injury, how that affects their scuba abilities, and um, about three people are interested in, in learning more about if it's appropriate for them to continue scuba with a uh, traumatic brain injury. John, do you have any thoughts about that? Sure, we, we've had a number of folks with TBIs in the program, um, but the bottom line that would, I think, uh, be the decision best made by your primary physician, but um, it's not a disqualifier by any means. We've had a lot come through our program with TBIs. Orlando, anything to add about that? Uh, actually, we've had brain traumatic, uh, traumatic, that's what, uh, traumatic brain injury. Uh, one of the things that we, I mean, it's not a requirement, but we kind of like push forward as uh, for safety issues is, you know, have somebody certify with you, like your spouse or somebody. That way, whenever you go diving, you have a dive buddy that understands everything that's going on with you. Uh, just for, you know, in case you wander off or something like that, you know, you have somebody with you 
but when mm -hmm. we do our when we do our trips, we're always gonna assign a dive buddy to you, so you're never gonna be by yourself. But in case you wanna dive by yourself with your family, have somebody that's certified. That's another question we received too, if there are opportunities or scholarships available for caregivers or family members to become certified as well. I think there are, um, I've got a whole list of programs that are similar to subs across the country. And I think some do and some don't. Um, I can I can email that to you, Julia, uh -huh. if you can just distribute that. All right, we'll make sure we share that with everyone. That'd be great. Thank you. Here in San Antonio, we actually, uh, if the veteran comes with his wife, we actually will certify both of them. Mm -hmm. Great. That's great. That's good. Any other questions, Bree? Yeah, if um, a lot of them are sp specific to uh, where they can go or um, if they happen in open water or in a pool, and I think that might be subjective on the location, but John, I think you're the expert here. Where they go for training or for diving? both um well the training yeah they would just do locally uh, hopefully they've got a dive shop near them um and most of the time you can find water training in a pool but it can also be in in a shallow water like a shallow shallow lake uh something like that and then diving you can, you can dive all over, the, all over the u.s fresh water and dive all over the world and salt water um if if they have specific questions on a location they can certainly uh, email me and I can get them I can follow up on that I'm happy to share the the sub's email I actually see it online shoot me an email and then I'll, I'll do everything I can to get you that, that answer and I can see some questions around the um, sessions obviously this this webinar um, can be shared with anyone um, afterwards that miss may have missed it but um, as far as the certification process goes um, that is done on your own time correct you can just schedule that according to when you have free time whether that's on the weekend or evenings you know you can kind of take your time through the um, online training portion. Is that correct, John? Well, most shops, unless you're gonna pay for a private lesson, they will wait until they have X amount of people signed up. Um, maybe they need like four or six people to get the class started. And then they'll do it, you know, the training every weekend or every other weekend. But more often than not, they'll have to wait until they until that class fills. Uh, so they're not just doing a one-on-one -on -one because the, the private, classes possible. yeah and obviously if now with there being social distancing factors you'll have to you'll want to call your individual shop and work out how they're managing that um, as far as numbers and what their process is like um, they may they might have changed some things but that's okay someone else is uh, wondering what they can do on land before they scuba like types of exercises to prepare I got that one. <laughs> Actually, yeah. exercise-wise, you really don't really need to do, I would say, running or no ex uh, simple exercise. You just need to know how to swim. Uh, that's a major, uh, I think, uh, across the board when it comes to every agency, um, something that can be waved off or can be modified is you have to learn how to swim. So I would say go to the pool and swim a lot. And also, cardiac can help. and and yoga uh, sometimes initially when people are learning in the pool they can get a little uh, anxiety a little ramped up so do some breathing techniques and yoga those things can help you relax I think that's a really good point because I remember being super nervous when I first tried scuba that the idea of it you think of being hundreds of feet below the water but of course when you start you're starting in a pretty shallow pool that you feel, and it's surprising how kind of safe you feel in that really controlled environment. And then you kind of get used to working the equipment and knowing how it all works and that. So it's really gradual. It helps you kind of feel gradually more comfortable for those who might be a little nervous about that. Right, and, and that's common. We're not yeah. being in a hundred feet of water with a bunch of sea monsters. You're like, yeah, yeah. Like you said, starting out in a shallow pool, it's very clear and it's a very controlled environment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, exactly. All right. So before we wrap things up here, I have one final question and it's a quick one for you. And I'm going to put you on the spot, both of you. Favorite place to dive? 
I get asked that a lot. <laughs> um, man, it just you know depends on what you're into. If you're into uh, pelagic, big big marine life, like you know sharks and manta rays, uh, I think there's no better place to go than Kona, Hawaii, the Big Island of Hawaii. Uh, if you're into wall diving, there's a place called the Turks and Caicos, which is uh, in the Bahamas and Dominican Republic. If you're into cave diving, no better place, in my opinion, is uh, Dominican Republic or uh, the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. There's this, Orlando's been to some pretty wild places. I'm sure you can speak to it as well, but it's, it's really tough to narrow down. I, let me back up. There is one spot on this planet that I would go to 100 times out of 100 times, and that's uh, this island called Mona, Mona Island. It's 40 miles off the west coast of Puerto Rico, and they call that the Galapagos of the Caribbean. So if you're bored, Google Mona Island. It's, it's phenomenal. It's an uninhabited island, and it uh, takes about three hours to get there. It's not, it's not an easy feat to get there, but it's world-class diving. Orlando? Well, I would have to say, if you really want to see a lot of colors, like beautiful colors, I would say the island of Bonaire. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about 40 miles north of Venezuela. It's part of the Antilles Islands. It's beautiful. I mean, it's a diver's paradise there. Uh, but I will honestly have to say, uh, if you're doing, if you, like John said, like if everything is different. So if you want to do wreck diving, I will honestly say, uh, Chuck Lagoon, uh, but want to see a lot of uh, different life and animals, I would say the Philippines. All right. Well, you've both certainly given us a really long list of post-COVID places to go. Mine was long already. Now it's even longer. So thank you. <laughs> um, on your screen um, is some contact information. If we didn't address your question today, and particularly if you have any scuba specific questions, go ahead and reach out to John directly. If you have questions around other opportunities provided by MOVE United Warfighters, uh, we offer other free adaptive sports for disabled veterans, and you can certainly go to our website and Google MOVE United Sports. You can find us pretty easily that way as well, or reach out to Bree. I think she shared her email in the chat too so you can reach us a number of ways um, but we're really pleased that everybody joined us today thank you so much and thank you very much to our panelists in particular John and Orlando for taking a half hour out of your day to day to share a little bit about the sport that you love so much so appreciate it and enjoy the rest of your day everybody thank you Bye. Thanks. thanks everyone